One of three IPOs begin to trade today. Savers Value Village going public at the NYSC. The for-profit thrift store will trade under ticker SVV, currently priced at 18. That was above the range. Mark Walsh, Savers Value Village CEO, joins us here at Post 9. It's great to have you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's an uh, exciting day for our 21,000 team members. Um, our mission is to make secondhand, second nature. We're really proud of what we do and how we do it. I want to talk about the business, but you're being used in part as a tell for the IPO market in general. And we were talking during the break about uh, how you think about how you thought about this process beginning quite a while ago now, right? Yeah, we started the we started the, the test the waters meetings in late 21, early 22. So we educated the investor community uh, during that time. We've kept our S1 fresh uh, throughout that period, and it's worked out to be. I think a great benefit for us as we got through the, this part of the process on the roadshow, investor community really excited about, I think, what we do and how we do it. Uh, profitability metrics are, are strong, and we've got some great secular tailwinds behind us that make this, uh, from an investment standpoint, very attractive. We, we've seen some uh, takes that it's somehow a a framework to play an economy that gets softer, perhaps, but maybe there are sort of generational dynamics that make it timeless. I don't, how, do you, how do you think about that? Well, that's interesting that you asked because there are generational aspects that do make it timeless. What we're seeing, especially today, is our new customers are skewing much, much younger. And if you walked into a store on a Saturday or a Friday or a Saturday, you'd see a great cross-section of age and demographics in those environments. But, you know, you talk about uh, resiliency of the business. Over the last 15 years, you take out the COVID, uh, excuse me, the COVID year, positive same-store sales comps. So it's a pretty good track record over the last 15 years over multiple economic cycles. Yeah, I mean, just in terms of uh, it being the sort of prevailing mode, I, mean, I have teenage daughters. It's kind of what they do is, is, is thrift and, and look secondhand. Is there a risk that it's there for a fashion phase? Uh, if, to, 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 to look in that direction as opposed to something that's actually going to be enduring? No, I think, I think it is enduring. I think what we see in Canada, you know, we typically have, uh, when we talk to our executives in Canada, they see the Canadian market as five to seven years ahead of the U.S. market in terms of acceptance of thrift as, main, as a mainstream retail environment. So we, we're not worried about that. I think for us it's about making the experience contemporary, 80% of consumers that we surveyed indicate they've touched thrift as either a shopper, a donor, or both. 90% of that 80% indicate they're going to interact with thrift on a more ongoing basis in the years to come. So we're pretty, we're pretty bullish on the future. Proceeds from today, I think, going to be used to pay down debt. Is that correct? Principally to pay down debt. The upsides we did will, will be a secondary to our uh, private equity partner areas. Uh, and as for Aries, I mean, they'll still control the company. What are their plans in terms of selling shares over time? Do you know? They've been a, they've been a tremendous partner. Um, I would I don't think it's appropriate for me to speak on their behalf as to their uh, their disposition strategy. But I couldn't be happier with the partnership we've had with Aries over the last four years during my tenure. All right, but I, you know, shareholders want to know if they're going to be dumping a lot more shares because it would have an impact. So, is there any plan on their part you can share? No, no I, I can't share that at this time. I mean, I think we're, we're going through the process. Obviously, this is the first secondary. What would make sense and how Aries positions it? Look, they're invested in the business. They want to make sure that the business, the business continues to perform strongly, both uh, operationally and certainly from a, a public markets use perspective. You mentioned uh, Canada being a few years ahead. Is, is the growth going to, is it a North American story? And if it's about increasing density in North America, why is Canada, why do they think of this differently than we do here in, in the States? Well, interesting, the, our unaided brand awareness in Canada is 93%. So it is really a powerful and mainstream part of the Canadian retail segment. Um, we still have, we still have a ways to go. I mean. We have 71 stores in the province of Ontario. It's only 14 million people. We're opening up two or three more in the coming years. So we're very excited about our, our prospects in Canada as well. And obviously, I think the stores ramp up faster in Canada, given that brand awareness. Does, the, does, the sec, does this market lend itself more to an in-person experience and therefore, you know, online is, can, it won't be as strong? I, I think it's a great question. Two things. Um, we did a lot of work around should we, should we pursue the online category. At $5 AURs, it's, it's simply uneconomic and not, not a smart use of our, uh, our investors' capital. 
On the flip side of that, we do, again, survey data, 70% of thrifters much prefer the brick and mortar experience. You get to touch it. It's about that uh, thrill of the treasure hunt. You know, we put 33,000 items, new items in a store on average per week, and we turn 15 times a year. So the average, the best of our customers coming in once a month, every time they come into the, the environment, it's fresh, it's new. I mean, it's really super exciting for them.